after a triumphant win in the election, things have gone steadily, well, a bit south for Mr. Starmer. Um, you can't possibly fail to alienate the people of Britain when you start knocking down pensioners. Most of us out here have parents or aunties or uncles or grandparents um, who we actually do consider family and we don't like to see them upset, especially those of our extended family who live on their own, who have limited resources. Um, uh, stunningly, if, if a small country like Ireland, where my family come from originally, can afford to pay better fuel payments than a supposedly rich payment country like England, it's quite interesting. But in any case, today brought even more trouble for Keir Starmer in the form of Diane Abbott. And I'm going to share her speaking about how she felt she was treated by the Labour Party. She's long been at odds with Keir, but like this is interesting. I think initially I was treated as a non-person which felt very strange because, well, at the same time, they were writing to party members trying to raise money on the back of how Hester had treated me without mentioning me, which was a bit odd. And when you say non-person, I mean, what, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you'd feel that if somebody was threatening to have you shot, you would have felt that your party would have offered you more support, given you advice on safety and security, even kind of commiserated with you, and none of that happened. And are you saying that the leader, Keir Starmer, treated you as a non-person? As I recall, Keir Starmer treated me as a non-person, and I got more support from the leader of the SNP, Stephen Flynn, than I got from the leader of my own party. That's not a great look for Keir Starmer. Now, uh, Dan is, of course, referring back to the letter she wrote where it was considered anti-Semitic. Um, I, I personally felt there was a massive overreaction to that letter, to be quite frank. Dan wrote about how various forms of prejudice exist, and she was a bit clumsy in expressing herself where she wrote about um, different forms of prejudice. But... Nevertheless, I felt the whole thing became an overreaction and a witch hunt to sort of try and get rid of this level of anti-Semitism that, well, there's, the valid criticism of Israel is not always anti-Semitism. And I felt at times there was becoming mixed up and it was becoming something of a witch hunt. Kistame is not going to look good when the longest serving black female MP in the country's history and the first black female MP, if I remember, Feel she was treated like a non person like this. On the same day as that, Keir Starmer also has the potential of numerous MPs possibly leaving the party or being suspended for not towing the party line. Uh, from a standpoint of date where, you know, after just after the election, a massive majority, he's slowly eroding himself by his charmless lack of charisma and his inability to sort of show empathy. Now, I'm not tied to any political party so much that I'd hero worship anyone. And although I'm left wing, I don't have a huge amount of time for Starmer. I find him sort of um, a cold fish, to say the least, and like a slightly robotic and slightly in love with himself. He gives off that vibe of being a slight, slightly unable to break from his own doctrinaire positions that he's established and realise perhaps they have limitations. I'm going to wait and see how this develops with Diane Abbott and him. It doesn't look like a, a lovely situation because although people mock Diane Abbott and people do stupid jokes about Diane Abacus and that, I suspect um, on this occasion people may actually be more supportive of her than Keir Starmer.